This silicon wafer has a hidden secret, and in order to see it, we had to put it underneath the microscope. Before we do that though, I wanted to show you just how beautiful this wafer is, so hopefully you can appreciate it as much as I do. The chips on this wafer have a very unique pink hue to them when you look at them just under the right light. I also found the edges of this wafer extremely mesmerizing with all of the different colors they produced. Alright, let's take a closer look. We'll start off with a scan that I made using my photo scanner at 1200 dpi. As we get to the edge of the resolution from the scan, we can switch over to a stitch that I made, which is comprised of 36 individual photos, all taken at 50 times magnification. At this magnification, I can zoom in pretty far and even pan around the photo to look at different sections. Ideally, it would be great if you could pan around by yourself, but I think the next best thing would be if I just panned around the entire chip. That way, you can zoom forward and backwards at your leisure. If I stick a smaller version of the chip up in the corner, it'll help us keep track of where we are. We'll start at 50 times magnification, the same magnification that was used to make that stitch we just looked at. With the help of my automated microscope, I'm able to take precise steps and in controlled amounts. This automation helps make sure that everything stays aligned as I'm panning around the chips. Hopefully you'll be able to pause at any time during the panning, and you should have a clear picture of the chip. That is, of course, depending on how much YouTube's compression algorithm compresses all of the features. Let's bump up the magnification to the next increment, 100 times magnification. Moving to the higher magnification meant I had to adjust the step size and speed so that we would still get a nice clear picture as we pan across the chip. I'll let the rest of this finish and I'll sync back up with you when it's done. Make sure you keep an eye out for anything interesting. That's going to do it for 100 times magnification. Let's jump up to 200 and see what it looks like. Once again, I had to adjust the step size and step speed so it didn't just look like a blur moving across the screen. Another issue at this higher magnification is that the focus from one side of the chip to the other varies drastically. In order to combat this, I attempted to adjust the focus slightly as I moved from one side to the other side of the chip. In some cases, I was successful, in other cases, the chip is out of focus, so please keep that in mind as you watch the rest of this footage. After the rest of this pans out at 200 times magnification, I'll focus in on a couple areas of the chip that are interesting and point a few things out. Before I head out again, I just wanted to point out how much time was involved making that little magnifying glass go across the chip. I did all of that by hand with keyframes on my phone, and if anybody has any better suggestions on how to make an image like that, please, please let me know.
All right, now that we've wrapped up with 200 times magnification, let's talk a little bit about this chip. You may have noticed that this chip was fabricated by AMI Semiconductor, which at the time was located in Pocatello, Idaho, which is why they included a picture of the state of Idaho with Pocatello marked on it. Not too far from the AMI logo is this interesting block down in the lower left corner. It's different from other circuits on the rest of the chip, and if I had to guess, is probably some sort of control logic for the rest of the chip. If we zoom in, we can see just how small all of these features are. The uppermost layers consist of different traces connecting other parts of the circuits together with the lower layers consisting of the different circuit elements like transistors, diodes, and resistors in order to create all of the different logic blocks needed for this chip. If we zoom back out and pan across to the right of the chip, we see some more interesting things. One of the secrets of this chip is that it has a silicon doodle of a dog. It has been suggested that this is a beagle referencing one of the team members on this design. Regardless of that, it's a very nice doodle and one of the coolest ones I've seen. Below the dog doodle is the Honeywell logo, which of course is the designer of this chip. If we zoom back out and go to the other corner of the chip, we find the other hidden secret that you may have already seen. Tucked away in this corner is a very small doodle, a doodle of Cocopelli. It's still unclear as to why Cocopelli was included on this design, but perhaps there was some significance to one of the designers. I don't know exactly what this chip is, but I have a pretty good guess, thanks to someone over on Twitter. They found that the part number on this silicon wafer matches up to a part number from OnSemi, which has the description of an interface for a ring laser gyroscope. It's fairly likely that's what this is, given how the part numbers match up. Well, that's gonna about do it for this video. I appreciate it if you made it this far and watched the entire video. If you have any suggestions for things you'd like to see in future videos, or different things I can do in the videos that you would enjoy, please let me know. I'm always interested to hear your suggestions and how I can make the videos better. Once again, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll have the next video ready to go relatively soon. So with that, I'll see you in the next chip.